For all they jabbered on about power, strength, and victory, the Sith took a whole lot of L's over the years. They had quite a talent for snatching defeat from the jaws of victory, regularly wiping themselves out with infighting or losing their leaders to Jedi whenever they came close to galactic domination. Today, we're going to be talking about one of the greatest defeats the Sith ever suffered, the greatest defeat of all according to Sith Lord Kas Im. The day before this particular engagement, the Sith Empire seemed poised to conquer the entire galaxy, but in one upset of a battle, it lost everything, and all because of one singular Jedi. In this video, we'll be looking at the Battle of Rakata Prime and why it's spelled Doom for the Sith Empire. Attention, Sergeant on deck! The Battle of Rakata Prime was the final battle of the Jedi Civil War, and to understand the significance of the battle, we need to understand the war as a whole. 3,960 years before the Battle of Yavin, after leading the Republic to victory in the Mandalorian Wars, the Jedi Knights Revan and Malak disappeared from known space, taking a third of the Republic fleet with them. Unbeknownst to the greater galaxy, they had fallen to the dark side and were searching for the star maps, ancient Rakatan artifacts they hoped would lead them to a long lost super weapon, the Star Forge. 5,000 years before the formation of the Republic, this Star Forge had been built by the Rakata, the rulers of a galaxy spanning civilization called the Infinite Empire. The Forge was a massive space spawn factory built in the Rakata's home system near Rakata Prime. Using solar matter drawn from the system's star and the power of the dark side, the Star Forge could create vast numbers of warships, starfighters, droids, and equipment at a rapid pace. Revan and Malak laid claim to the station, planning to use it to create an infinite fleet with which they could crush the Republic. From the command deck of the Star Forge, they declared themselves the Dark Lords of a new Sith Empire. In 3959 BBY, they began their war with the Republic, known as the Jedi Civil War or the Second Sith War. With the Republic still weak after the Mandalorian Wars, Darth Revan and his infinite fleet quickly managed to conquer a third of the known galaxy. But the Republic held itself together thanks to the efforts of Bastila Shen, a young Jedi skilled in the rare arts of battle meditation. Using the Force, Bastila was able to coordinate Republic forces while stripping the Sith of their will to fight. This won the Republic just enough battles to survive, at least for a while. In 3957 BBY, Bastila and a Jedi strike team successfully boarded Darth Revan's flagship. While they confronted the Dark Lord, his apprentice, Darth Malak, ordered his ships to open fire on Revan's flagship, destroying the vessel. Revan was presumed dead, though unbeknownst to all but a few, Bastila saved him and brought him back to the Jedi Council. Revan was badly wounded, but Bastila and the Council managed to keep him alive. The Council then wiped Revan's mind and gave him a new personality, one loyal to the Republic, hoping that just enough of his memories would bubble to the surface to help them stop the Sith. Originally, the Jedi thought Revan's defeat would cause the Sith to crumble, but Darth Malak immediately assumed his master's role in the Empire, continuing the offensive against the Republic. Under Malak, Sith forces became much more brutal and destructive, and by the end of 3956 BBY, the Republic was on its last leg. With an invasion of the Core Worlds near at hand, the Council retrained Revan as a Jedi and sent him off with Bastila and Republic war hero Karth Onasi in search of the star maps. Revan and his allies, the crew of the Ebon Hawk, did succeed in tracking down the Star Forge's location, but tragedy struck during their quest. Bastila was captured by Darth Malak, and the Sith destroyed the Jedi Enclave on Dantooine, crippling the Jedi Order. By the time Revan, now aware of who he was, made it to Rakata Prime, the Sith were preparing for their final offensive. The vanguard of the Sith Armada was assembling around the Star Forge, which was producing reinforcements at an astonishing rate. Malak had turned Bastila to the dark side, anointing her his new apprentice. Soon, the Sith planned to launch an all-out assault on the Core Worlds, the last bastions of the Republic. The Republic was already on the verge of defeat. There were a few Jedi left, and their fleet had almost been pushed back to the Core. The Sith Empire had every possible advantage. They had an infinite fleet, unending hordes of battle droids, armies of Sith Acolytes and Dark Jedi, and momentum. 
Never before in galactic history had the Sith come so close to crushing the Republic. Never again would they come so close and yet lose it all so easily. All of the leading figures in the Sith Empire were present at Rakata Prime. Malak, Bastila and the greatest of their Dark Jedi were all aboard the Starforge while Admiral Varko oversaw a fleet of Sith warships. The Starforge was surrounded by large numbers of Interdictor class cruisers, odd beak shaped warships that were the mainstay of the Sith during the Jedi Civil War. The Starforge was continually producing new Interdictors as well as vast swarms of agile Sith fighters. When Revan and his allies discovered the Starforge, their ship, the Ebon Hawk, strayed into a disruptor field and was forced to land on Rakata Prime. After transmitting the system's coordinates to the Republic fleet, Revan, Karth and the others shut down the disruptor field which was being projected from the Temple of the Ancients, a Rakatan construct the Sith occupied. There, they learned that Bastila had fallen to the dark side but had no time to dwell on it. The Republic Navy was already on its way. In a last, desperate bid to stop the Sith, the Republic and the Jedi threw pretty much everything into the ring at Rakata Prime. Under the command of Admiral Thorn Dodena, a fleet primarily composed of Hammerhead-class cruisers, Foray-class blockade runners, and Aurek-class tactical strike fighters jumped into the system, joined by Jedi Master Vandar and a squadron of Jedi Knights. They engaged the Sith Armada but were initially unable to make any headway. Aboard the Starforge, Bastila used her battle meditation to strengthen Sith defenses. So long as she did so, the Republic didn't stand a chance of victory. Hoping to defeat or at least distract Bastila, the Jedi and the crew of the Ebonhawk boarded the Starforge. Revan and his allies found their way deep into the space station, cutting through wave after wave of battle droids, Sith troopers and Dark Jedi. Meanwhile, the Sith Armada formed a massive defensive line aiming to prevent the Republic fleet from reaching the Starforge. Dodd and his ships probed for a break in the Sith battle lines but were unable to find one. With Republic casualties mounting, it seemed a Republic defeat was inevitable. In that desperate moment, Revan breached the Starforge's command center and confronted Bastila Shen. After a lengthy lightsaber battle, Shen was defeated and saw the error of her ways. She begged Revan to kill her but Revan refused, instead guiding her back to the light. As Revan left to confront Darth Malak, Bastila resumed her battle meditation, but this time she aided the Republic. The effect was felt immediately. Suddenly, the Republic's green squadron found a weak point in the Sith Cordon and pushed through, breaking the defensive line. The Republic's squadrons poured into the breach, overwhelming the Sith fighters present and harassing nearby Sith cruisers. Dodona's capital ships moved up next, blasting through the Sith warships and pushing toward the Star Forge. The Sith Armada fell into disarray as the hole in the defensive line widened. In the confusion, the Sith's fighters were slaughtered and many of their cruisers were lost. As Republic cruisers assembled around the Star Forge and opened fire, Revan fought his way up to one of the station's viewing platforms where Darth Malak was waiting. Malak had made preparations for Revan's arrival, gathering Jedi bodies in the chamber so he could drain force power from them at will, but it wasn't enough. In a ferocious lightsaber duel, Revan at last struck down his old apprentice. His work complete, he returned to the Ebonhawk, which sped away from the Starforge as fast as humanly possible. Even as Darth Malak died, Admiral Dodona's cruisers tore into the Starforge, dealing significant damage to the station. On Dodona's orders, they concentrated fire on the station's main orbital stabilizers. Once those were knocked out, the Starforge fell into the sun. The remaining Sith forces present at Rakata Prime were summarily routed by the victorious Republic fleet. In a single battle, the Republic had pulled off the greatest decapitation strike in galactic history. The Dark Lord of the Sith, the commander of the Sith Armada and all of the Dark Jedi and officers in line to replace them were all dead and Bastila Shen had returned to the light. The Starforge had been destroyed and the vanguard of the Sith fleet was wiped out with it. The Republic occupied Rakata Prime, the de facto capital of the Sith Empire. The result of this was rather predictable. With the chain of command obliterated, all of the surviving Sith acolytes and petty officers turned on each other, destroying what was left of the Sith Empire in a brutal struggle for power. This Sith Civil War was brief, lasting only a few months, but by the end of it, the Republic had reclaimed every last system it had lost to the Sith. All of this was thanks to the action of one Jedi, 
Revan. The very man who had founded this Sith Empire single-handedly destroyed it by redeeming Bastila and slaying Malak. He went from being the Dark Lord to the Savior of the Galaxy. The Battle of Rakata Prime didn't quite destroy the Sith, nor did it come as close as the Seventh Battle of Rusen, but it was the most precipitous fall the Sith ever suffered. They had every possible advantage, and still, they lost. But what do you think? Are there other battles from the Jedi Civil War that you'd like to see us cover? Let us know all that and more in the comments section below. And as always guys, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.